go take a look at the old box body, shall we? Here, making progress. This is only day two or night two, I should say, of doing the, this uh, Holly Terminator X install. Wow, look at that, guys. We just had the fuse tap in the wrong position. Hold on. Are you, are you gopro me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Trying to figure out, did my wideband fail immediately? What happened? All right, guys. So this is a little bit of an impromptu video, but I decided to do this because I'm pretty excited about it. Kind of walking through work here after hours, doing some projects here. Let's go take a look at the old box body, shall we? A little noisy. All right, here we go. See the Mustang here in all its glory. And oh my goodness, it's torn apart again. But hey, look at that. It's the old wiring harness. I think you all know what that means. Let's go ahead and show you guys in the passenger seat here. Yep. Terminator X time. All right, so kind of give you guys an update of what we've gotten accomplished so far in everything. Uh, all right, let's take a look. We got some of the new Holly stuff in and we got some of the old stuff out, kind of in the middle of everything right now. But uh, big thing I wanted to show you guys is got the factory wiring all complete to where all the gauges will work and the TFI harness right here the wire that gets the signal from the coil here all spliced in all ready to go and we taped it up with some nice holly loom it's gonna run through here of course it looks kind of like a disaster zone right now because we're kind of like halfway in between everything as you can see got the new holly tfi harness right here the injector harness as you can see we got the new injectors in already So we still gotta replace the coolant temperature sensor and the air temperature sensor right here. So yeah, so kind of next up, we gotta fish the new Holly harness through the old grommet through the firewall. And we only have to make three more electrical connections, I believe. Yep, so I'll show you guys that after we get that done. I'm pretty stoked so far, a couple nights working on it. Of course, tearing the upper intake manifold off, pulling the old factory wiring harness out, taking the wires out that we needed, which wasn't very many, four wires total essentially that we needed from the factory to keep the factory gauges working. The rest is all the new Holly stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, huge shout out to Jeremy over there for sticking around late at night here to help me pretty much get some, a lot of this stuff done. And so we're pretty much at a good point, good stopping point for the night. So we're gonna go ahead and continue this possibly tomorrow and probably go ahead and get the old wide band out of my downpipe, put the new one in and then start fishing the main holly harness through, getting closer. All right, check back in, check back in with you guys in just a minute. All right, back at it again tonight, different day of course. Go ahead and show you guys a little progress update here. Okay, this is the new Bosch 49 sensor, the new Bosch wide band. We already got that installed. Got the new water temp sensor, the Holly sensor installed. And of course the Holly air temp sensor installed. See that in there? All right. Now, and actually went ahead and got the new Holly map sensor install got the airline attached now we're going ahead and uh, taking the main holly harness and getting that ready for the new plug jeremy's working on that right now so you guys can kind of see what's involved here the holly part number this is the three bar map that's part of the anderson kit and also one that's already pre-programmed into the terminator x software there's the part number it has a new male and female plug for the map sensor itself and Jeremy's working on getting those pinned into the harness. The green plug, weirdly enough, that you see down there, that's the one that comes on the harness uh, pre-installed from the factory. 
kind of weird that uh, it doesn't fit this map sensor, but nonetheless, cut that off and Jeremy's getting the new plug pinned into it and we'll get that on here shortly. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and start fishing the main harness through the firewall. And after that, we can start plugging stuff in. Uh, there's really, I think, only five more electrical connections that need to be made. And I'll show you guys what we end up doing. So stay tuned. All right, another update here. Making progress. This is only day two or night two, I should say, of doing the, this uh, Holly Terminator X install. Making some pretty darn good progress. So let's take a look at the engine bay. All right, look at this. We got the intake manifold back on. That's because the Holly harness is in the engine bay and pretty much routed where I want it to be. Now, granted, the intake manifold is still loose. Just literally threw it on here so that way the ports were covered and making sure that we're not going to run into any issues. But yeah, everything's hooked up, kind of ran where it's going to be going. Doesn't look half bad either. So just to kind of show you guys what's going on on the um, factory harness side here. Remember, we had to splice a couple wires in there, four in total. So all the factory gauges should work and the holly should work because the holly is all ran. This, that's mostly on this side here. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, a couple cool things we did is that we ended up just cutting off the holly TPS um, weather pack connector, cutting off the Ford connector and just splicing it directly and then of course covering it with the holly loom. And then you can see, if, so for some reason, the TPS ever fails on this thing, it's literally just buy another one and plugs right in. So that's what we're going for with that. All right, looks good. All right. Of course, got the wide band ran back through. Still need to install the grommet. Again, this is this is kind of a kind of a rough where this is going to all land. So many thanks to a couple guys that helped, stayed late tonight and helped out. Mr. Matt right there. And of course, Mr. Jeremy right there. So big shout out to those guys for hanging out late on a Friday night. Again, this is only night two and we probably spent what? A total of four hours total on this thing? Something like that. So guys, it's just, that's just how simple a Terminator X is. And we haven't needed to use a lift or anything. So nothing special on this one. Having an extra set of hands has actually kind of helped because Fishing the harness through is kind of the most tedious thing. And of course, me kind of doing things a little bit backwards, doing the fuel system first where I mounted my regulator, bringing everything is, of course, now everything's just in the way. So that sucks. So I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to. But I wasn't expecting to do this Terminator X thing so quickly, but it's still cool that we got to do it. And we're about, I don't know, about 75% there. So uh, we're pretty much going to end it for tonight. So we're gonna pick it back up here, probably finishing up the wiring. All right, the next day here, we just plugged in everything to the Terminator X. So, so far so good. Nothing's catching on fire or smoking or anything like that. Now it's time for them. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick what we did. See, we got everything plugged in, power, main harness, Got the wires ran and of course got everything plugged in. Went ahead and applied power to the car. And as you can see, the interior lights are on. So we're gonna go ahead and flick power on real quick to this. Let's see what happens. Fuse tap in the wrong position. And we switched the fuse tap over for our switch power. <laughs> car fired up. It's actually holding trying to hold idle right now. So yeah, wow. It's actually running pretty darn good, surprisingly. Uh, so, of course, we just wanted to make sure everything worked here, and uh, make sure this is. We just want to make sure, of course, everything's working. We'll probably have to adjust some stuff. Uh, we'll have to verify the timing through the static timing. But uh, wow, my car runs. It's actually holding idle really well. It's not surging at all. It's actually already idling at like a thousand RPM. Wow. Okay, I am super happy. <laughs> this is actually, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill it. 
gotta add coolant to it and everything, but um, look good. I gotta add coolant to it because it's low. So, but yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and kill it there, and then uh, talk to you guys here in just a second. Car's idling great. I'm just doing some idle tuning right now. We actually ran the car last night and uh, I'll share the final results with you guys in just a minute, but we're gonna go ahead and run it again uh, just to make sure everything's still good. And uh, yeah, so it's idling great. It's uh, still learning uh, quite a bit here at startup and idle and stuff like that. So uh, pretty soon here, we'll pretty much just be dialing in the little stuff. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty darn impressed with this system. So stay tuned for the Dyna Bowl. Wait, you, are you gopro me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yep. I'm just going to go boom, boom, boom. Okay, here we are in the dyno building. The car made 500 real world horsepower and nearly 500 foot pounds of torque on just the third dyno pole. This system is super awesome. It learns extremely fast and pretty simple to use for the most part. So guys, a couple things you're gonna wanna consider when doing a Terminator X for your car. Number one, download the software. I'm just gonna say that right off the bat. Don't use the handheld to do your tuning. Now granted, once you get your base tune going, by all means, you can use the handheld, but for your initial start, go into the software, make yourself a tune, and if you don't have a laptop, you can still use your regular computer. The SD card will come out of the handheld, and you can use that to load tune files onto your SD card. And then, of course, transfer those to the Terminator X. Download the software. There's a couple key uh, components and key features on the software that will be able to make your car run way better than what the handheld can. For example, the IAC, the idle air control motor, don't ask me why this is, but this is just how it is. The IAC in the Terminator X is set up for a GM right out of the box. And unfortunately, if you don't switch that, your car will either idle poorly or never really hold idle. So you gotta go into the software, switch the idle air control motor to a 5.0 liter Ford, switch it to pulse width modulated, and set your frequency. And depending on what your car likes, you may set it between 300 to 600. Just, again, you can play with that a little bit to get what your car likes. So in regards to my car, eight pounds of boost, 331, upgraded Anderson level one fuel system, 500 real world horsepower, stupid, stupid, stupid easy. And now I need to go drive this car, but of course it's winter here in Illinois, salt on the roads. This car is pretty much done for the time being until it's time to drive it every day. And when I do, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing really dialed in, but I'm pretty happy with 500 horsepower. You know, the stock block 331 with good components, uh, low boost, eight pounds of boost, and it it keeps carrying, keeps making power. So I think I'm gonna stick with that for a little bit, just to enjoy it before we start cranking things up. Now, I wanna be honest with you guys. I did have an issue with this thing, especially after we got the idle pretty much dialed in. This car would fire up, hold idle, better than it ever has, even when this car had a stock computer in it. It's idled so good. Now. I'm going to just put this out there right now because you guys may face this issue and I want you guys to avoid this problem. When we got the idle dialed in, my laptop was on low battery. Got it dialed in and went to save the tune file, my laptop died in the middle of saving it. No big deal, figured the tune was uh, still loaded into the ECM, so why not? Well, when I go to fire up the car the next day so we can get it on the dyno and start doing pulls on it, car would not hold idle, it ran the Wide band was showing us running at 38 to 1. I had to pedal the living daylights out of it to keep it running. And it was just puking so much black smoke out the tailpipes. My spark plugs were fouled. And we're trying to figure out, did my wide band fail immediately? What happened? 
Well, here's the deal, and I believe Holly actually covers this. Their technicians can probably tell you this, and I believe the instructions even go over this. Um, spikes in voltage, loss in voltage, extreme ups, extreme downs. It does not like it. It will corrupt your tune files, and that's exactly what happened. So after changing out the plugs, kind of brainstorming a little bit, I saved my initial tune file, went ahead and reloaded that into the ECU, and boom, car fired right up, idled great, and we're able to throw it on the dyno, make a couple poles, and make 500 horsepower. So guys, be extremely careful. Watch out for voltage spikes. If you have to, say, jump your car because your battery's low, Reach under the seat, unplug the power uh, harness connector to the, uh, to the Terminator X, and then get some juice to the battery. Make sure your battery's charged, and then plug it in and try and start it. Don't just try and jump it. It could cause voltage spikes and corrupt your tune. And therefore, if you corrupt your tune, you'll know right away, car won't run for anything. Go ahead and reload the tune file, and make sure you save, I'm gonna say this too, make sure you save multiple tune files because say, for instance, you work on one and all of a sudden something happens, something weird happens, it doesn't run right. Well, then you don't have to start over. You don't have to go to square one. Go ahead and go back into your most recent tune file, re-upload it to the ECU, and bam, you should be good to go. So a couple things that I learned immediately right off the bat, and car's running great. So one other thing I want to mention, the data log portion of the software. Wow, that is some really cool stuff, really easy to use and really good data that you can look at because it's not like there's a preset amount of data points that you can get. You can pretty much, whatever the ECU can look at, it'll be in the data log for you. All you gotta do is select that and you can even make a custom data log sheet. And I am super surprised and actually that's how we were able to dial in the car to 500 wheel wheel so easily because we got to see, okay, it didn't like this timing here and it started breaking up a little bit. So we smoothed it out, lowered the timing a little bit, boom made all the power. So, the data log software, also a very cool function of the Terminator X. So I'm pretty much gonna leave it off there, guys. I hope you guys got some value out of this if you're looking to do a Terminator X. I installed this thing with the help of a couple guys in the shop. Again, shout out to Jeremy and Matt for staying late a couple days to kind of work on this thing. And we did it in about probably seven and a half hours. And that was more, mostly because, you know, we wanted to take our time with making the factory gauges work. But if we really pushed ourselves and kind of just went full on, full bore with it, we probably could have had it done in about five hours. That's how simple the system is to install. So, um, a lot of great benefits with the Terminator X kit. I highly suggest that if you got the means and if you have the ability and the budget for one, by all means, pick up the kit. Anderson Ford Motorsport, we stock these things, we keep them on the shelf. Huge shout out to my place where I am employed, Anderson Ford Motorsport, because they're the ones that sponsored the Terminator X going into my Fox Body Mustang. So huge shout out to them. www.AndersonFordMotorsport.com. Pick yourself up a kit. I keep them on the shelf because I know the value of these things. I know how popular and sometimes hard they are to get. So guys, give me a call or check out the website. Get yourself a kit today. So that's where we're going to leave off for my initial thoughts of the Terminator X system for a Fox Body Mustang. If you guys like my content, please like, please share, and subscribe. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any new content coming to the channel. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.